Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Today, I'm going to walk the pepper path. That's what I call our front walk, because it's lined on both sides with pots and plants. This is part one of a two-part episode where I'll show you the varieties we're growing this year. In part one, I'm going to cover all the plants on the north side of the walk. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. It's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit this afternoon, but this may be our last true summer day. Later this week, we'll get a brief taste of fall, with highs in the 50s and lows in the 40s. Neither Cat or I is originally from Minnesota. We choose to live here in the land of short summers and long winters. Still, it's always a little sad when the signs of fall start appearing. The days get shorter, the nights are cooler, pepper leaves start turning yellow, and birds start flying south. Add to that the angsty bundle of fears, worries, and concerns that are part of daily life in 2020, and I wouldn't blame anyone for exhibiting some minor symptoms of melancholy. But why don't we forget all of that? At least for a few minutes. It's been a very productive summer for hot peppers, so today we'll take a look at some beautiful pods and the plants that produce them. Plants of genus Capsicum. Let's get started. I wanted to give you an overhead view of the area we're going to cover today, and the only way to do that is from up on the roof. I had a good reason for going out there. I couldn't see anything out of my office window because it was almost completely covered with vineage. So out I went. I'm scaring myself watching this. Tell that old man to get off the roof before he falls and hurts himself. Luckily, I didn't fall, and now I can see out the window again. Plus, I got the shot I needed. Here's the area of the garden we'll be covering in this video. Before we take a look at each individual plant, let's take a quick ground level tour around the north side of the garden. The big planting area next to the public sidewalk contains no pepper plants, but there is a row of fabric grow bags just on the other side of the wall. Now I'll come back and head up the walk. Even though these pots are so close to the sidewalk, we're not aware of anyone ever stealing one. Maybe an individual pod or two gets poached from time to time, but we have plenty to share. We don't sweat it. These ceramic pots are the ones I relocated during the Great Hot Pepper Pot migration several weeks back. Now we'll round the corner and head back down the other side. Oops, I can't forget, there are a few pepper plants by the front steps. Okay, now we'll travel east through the grass. On the left is a cart holding eight pots. I killed all the grass underneath the row of pots on the right. And next year, I'm planning on laying down a strip of river rock for them to sit on. Just past the forsythia bush, we find additional fabric pots in this area we call the extension because we just started placing pots here a year or two ago. There used to be a beautiful juniper bush planted here that spilled out over the stone wall, but unfortunately it died after a brutal winter a few years back. So here we go. Pollinators are busy pollinating in the early afternoon sun as we begin our deep dive into the peppers. Just like with the overview tour, we'll start on the street facing side of the extension and go all the way around until we're on the other side. You're going to be seeing a lot of seven pot Primo Orange. It's one of four varieties we're growing for our hot sauce collaboration with Tim Myers at Hot Heads Official. There are several Primos in a row here. Finally, something different, a Carolina Reaper. Next to that, a Butch Tea Scorpion. Beautiful pods on this plant. Here's a seven pot Lucy, a cross between a red seven pot and a Naga Viper. Next to that is a seven pot Katie, the reverse cross of the same two varieties. These sister plants are named after the daughters of Nick Duran from the UK. These two seven pots are also varieties we're growing for the hot sauce collaboration. This label is not correct. It's not Ward EX, it's MA Yellow Wartrex. MA is for the creator, Matthew Arnold. 
I was sent one of these pods last year by Jimmy Pickles and saved the seeds. Thanks, Jimmy. It's a three-way cross of Scorpion, Seven Pot, and Ubatuba Kabuchi. Here's Habanero Gambia Orange, a really nice Chinense variety from Africa with an interesting flat bottom shape. King Naga, a large cultivar of Naga Jalokia or ghost pepper, as grown in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. This is Antileus Caribbean, a very delicious and hotter than average habanero. Silic Laboyo is from the Philippines, seeds courtesy of my friend Pascal Canning. This plant did not do well early in the season, but it's rallied, and I hope that its tiny fruit will ripen before frost. It's got really distinctive kind of gray ivory flowers. Avenir is another habanero from Africa. Not as fruity as some others, and with above average heat. Trinidad Scorpion Long SR. This is the last of the four collaboration hot sauce plants to make an appearance in this video. It doesn't produce the largest pods, but they're very, very hot, and their neutral flavor pairs well with other hot sauce ingredients. This seven pot Lucy is a plant I almost composted because it looks so scraggly. It bounced back, but it remained tiny, kind of like a banshee. Full size fruit though. Here's seven pot Chihuangas yellow. Seven pot white, but I think it really should be called seven pot ivory or seven pot cream. Here's one that's nearly ripe. Ahi Charapita Inquidos. This is a wild variety with seeds collected very close to the Amazon, according to the Semillos La Palma website. At the time of this filming, I was waiting for these to ripen, but I wanted to show you what they look like today when they ripen. They are actually a yellow color. Another seven pot Primo Orange. And look, grasshopper damage. We're not seeing a lot of this munching, but just enough to be aggravating. I hope I can salvage some of this pepper. Another seven pot Primo Orange. Still a lot more of them to come. This scorpion has a volunteer companion, Portulaca, keeping it company. Here's a Maruga Scorpion and Reaper Cross. A lot of fruit, but nothing ripe here today. This label says Scorpion Long SR, but the pods say otherwise. Either I made an error or this plant grew from a mislabeled seed. These look more like dragon's breath or brain strain maybe. Ahi Chambo, a habanero from Panama. We were sent these seeds by our good friend Hugo Vera. You may remember a while back that we uh, tasted some hot sauce that he made from these peppers. We've harvested quite a few ripe pods from this plant, but I don't see any today. Cap 1141 is a rare wild variety from Peru. Capsicum Pratermissum, really tiny, but very hot pods. Like many bird peppers, the pods detach from the calyx when ripe. They'll just fall off if you shake the plant. Seven pot brain strain red. Here's a nice ripe one. Ahi pineapple is a chinense from Peru. Very hot with a distinctive soapy taste. Some hate it, but I love it. Dwarf chiltepin, tiny plant, but very productive. Capsicum anum, so they're not blistering hot, but they still pack quite a punch. Trinidad Scorpion Ruga Caramel, another plant with a volunteer companion. But look, this pot is red. Something's not quite right here. Here's another scorpion. This time it's a butch tea yellow. Hey, Piri Piri, get out of the shot and wait your turn. Hey, look, this one is nearly ripe. Now it's Piri Piri time. This is grown throughout Africa, originally introduced from Portugal. Kangstar Peach Starburst a follow-up to the well-loved lemon starburst, waiting for ripening. Greek pepperoni. You'll find the pickled version of this in Greek salads. Cap 1445, a small but very productive wild plant of species Capsicum chaucens, chewy with a smoky flavor. Now, this is a Capsicum species that has never been domesticated as far as I know. Here's a bird ahi. These are Capsicum bacidum, medium hot. They freeze very nicely and are nearly like fresh when you throw a handful into a soup or stir fry. This is labeled as a Maruga Red, but looking at the pods, I say the tags got switched between this one and the one that was marked Maruga Caramel we looked at several plants ago. More Long SR. Another Aki Pineapple. I do love these. Bootjalokia Strain 2. 
better known as ghost pepper. Two very different phenotypes on the same plant. The one on the right is the more classic shape. Limon from Peru, chinense, and similar in taste to ahi pineapple, but a little bit more soapy and citrusy. I love it. I want to take just a second and apologize if the quality of some of the footage is subpar. I decided to try out this chest harness and be hands-free, but it's really hard to aim the camera by moving your upper body. It's just not intuitive. Me plus chest cam equals fail. Now we'll come down the other side. There are a lot of duplicates in this row, so I'm going to take it at a pretty fast clip. Here's a Japanese shishido. I have much bigger shishido plants in the ground on the other side. Another seven pot Lucy. Even plants in the small 10 inch pots can earn their keep. Carolina Reaper. This was another scrawny plant that still lived a useful life. Another Panamanian, Ahi Chambo. Another small Reaper. We'll spend a little more time with this one. Ricotto Ahi Largo is from Loja, Ecuador. Eventually will ripen to red I hope. They go through some color changes in between. Yet another reaper. Squirrels have been digging in here. Here's a very bumpy pod. Oh, hello. Is this too much reaper? This Lucy is doing well. I love these seven gallon fabric pots from Bootstrap Farmer. The combination of these pots and Fishner Organic Fish Manure Compost has been a winning combination for my plants this year. Here's an interesting variety, Gator Jigsaw. I won these seeds from Barry Gill in a giveaway on the Pepper Freaks Facebook group. This is an unusual variety in that it's green ripening. I'm not sure what the final color is. I've not tried one yet, but I hear they are extremely hot. I'll report back. They certainly look dangerous. More Seven Pot Lucy. And more Seven Pot Katie. Hi, sisters. Seven Pot Primo Orange. Sorry for the repetition. I love how Seven Pot Primo is one of the most consistent in appearance. Not a lot of variation between plants. More Seven Pot Katie. Seven Pot Primo Orange. And the last plant in this row is another Katie. Now I'm in the extension. I have to cut back this grass all the time because it crowds the plants. These plants get more pests than those elsewhere in the garden because the pests travel easily from other nearby plants. These are all varieties you've seen multiple times already. The only exception here is this VV7 scorpion, a Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute variety. Hopefully, these pods will ripen soon. Finally, let's take a quick look at the card. Here's a Prima Tally. Here's a Big Sun Habanero crossed with Jigsaw. The heat level is definitely more Jigsaw than Big Sun. Brain strain purple to chocolate. These pods turn so many interesting shades on their journey to brown. Here are a couple from another plant. I don't know a lot about this one, but I guess it's a space pepper crossed with a Jay's Peach Ghost and a Peach Boot Jalokia. This one is supposed to be an MA Pink 7 pot, but it looks pretty red to me. Finally, here's a Bootla XPF4. These plants have beautiful foliage and the pods have crazy colors. We've been so happy to have such amazing harvest this season. Such a wide variety of sizes, shapes, colors, and textures. And not to mention the wide variety of heat levels and flavors. Every week, We've been sending a box of pods to Tim Myers of Hot Heads Official for our hot sauce collaboration. If you enjoyed this tour, 
Part two is coming very soon. All the footage has been shot and it's just awaiting some time for me to edit it. Earlier today, I got my first professional haircut since January and it really feels great. Hey, check out all our merch at sevenpot.club slash merch. We've got lots of cool new designs and many of them are available on premium face masks. I really hope we have a few more weeks of harvest before first frost. To see how things turn out, please follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.